this status date on that Friday, these are my earned value figures. What you would expect with 100% of the work done in 100% of the time that my planned value and earned value are the same. If I were to only earn four days worth at the end of five days, then I'm I'm behind. My earned value is four thousand dollars. Plan value five thousand. My schedule variance is minus a thousand. Below zero is bad. Above zero is good. That would be I'm ahead of schedule. So schedule variance is earned value minus planned value. Service uh, the schedule performance index is 0.8. It is the earned value divided by planned value. The cost variance is zero now because my actual costs are my earned value costs. They're the same. The reason they would change is if I were to um, have to pay for, say, some licensing costs, material costs, some resource juggling on tasks, things that would affect my cost after I had baselined it. If those vary, then that is revealed in the actual cost of work performed and subsequently under the cost variance and then the cost performance index. The, er the estimate at completion is an important number in controlling cost. It will become the estimated cost at the end using the CPI, the cost performance index. So these are a useful set of numbers. Watch how this works. Say at the end of this week I've got all the work done that I had intended to and I have done let's say all of the second week. Okay, I'm going to change my status date. The week has come and gone. It's now the 17th. I would expect now, I'm halfway through the project, two weeks into the project, and all of the work is, exactly all the work is done. So, boring numbers, but wouldn't you love to have those numbers? Tracking at exactly your estimated rates. Now, in the second week, pretend that I have only earned three days worth of work, but I've finished my five days. I'm earning, I earned only in that second week, three days worth of work. So I would have a scheduled performance index of 0.6. My cumulative scheduled performance index is 0.8. Now something to note. With service, I mean, the schedule performance index is important. It's on the critical path. Observe the critical path carefully. You may have a low performance index on non-critical path issues, and it, it might be just fine. But as you watch the critical path, those tasks that are critical, take care of those first. They have, the, of course, the absolute greatest impact. So these no numbers look straightforward. What you're looking for is across the top of the project, the general health of the project, 0.8. I'm tracking it. 80% efficiency in my schedule, my consumption of, of my expected costs. My estimate completion in this case is not really a useful number because my costs are tracking with my labor one to one. But suppose this item is on my critical path, and in this case it is, and it's 0.6. It's having the a great effect 
uh, if I deter if I can detect that I'm getting low numbers, low performance indices on critical items, we just focus there. So I hope this takes the mystery out of it. It's really quite quite straightforward. Now, I said we would approach earned value techniques in in project and only project. In cheating a little bit, 2007 version offers the ability to do a quick visual report. If you choose to do this, it's visual reports, earn value over time. It creates a cube. I'll expand just to show by the week. Graphs, if you need to present the data in a graphical way, this is a very easy way to get it out. First week, second week, you see that I have a variance, 8,000 to 10,000. And then no data in the third week or in, the, in week 15. Now, there are many Excel templates available to manually enter the data that you see here, your earned value information, and they give you more elaborate, at times more useful information. However, for general use, it really is just this simple. So I hope you enjoyed it. Be encouraged. Earn value is easier than you might imagine. Thank you.